Hello, my name is Alan Billings, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tech. Uh, we're talking about a little bit of Google, a little bit of MySpace, a little bit of about.me, and about QR codes today. Start, today, we're starting off with Google. Of course, we're talking about Google. We talk about Google every time, but we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, we're talking about goo.gl. Uh, goo.gl, which is Google uh, without the E. Uh, goo.gl is a URL redirection for long websites. You may be familiar with people like co.cc, um, another place that does short uh, web pages. They shorten your web page. Uh, goo.gl which is uh, meant for, like I said, meant for long URLs, but it's not just meant for uh, long URLs like, um, let's say you have a really long uh, web, uh, web page name, um, let's talk tech.com backslash image backslash image two backslash show backslash, and it can go on dot whatever HTML, HTML, PHP. Uh, but let's say you have a really long URL and you want to uh, make it shorter, make it easier for your uh, fans uh, or the people of the page to access it. Um, and you want to put it on the website, but you don't want to put it on this long URL. You want to put on a, uh, a short uh, link. Uh, so you go in and you tell them, okay, go to uh, g, uh, goo.gl backslash and Google will create a uh, its own form of a web uh, redirection, uh, its own form of a web URL. Uh, if it's, it'll make up, uh, it's random. It's a random code. Uh, it'll usually be like Q6VR, something like that. It'll be something crazy. Um, but uh, useful. Um, but also uh, a feature I've caught on with this is that goo.gl also, every time I post something to our blog and uh, which I do constantly. It always makes a web. It always makes a short uh, URL for all of those. Great. Uh, it's great that it does that. I like that it does that. But uh, it can be annoying because I do it so much. Uh, so it's going to create a short URL for all that if I wanted to put it on the page, which I will eventually do. Um, which I will eventually put it all up on our website. But there's really no reason for that when I could just in, uh, embed the blog to it. But again, it could be useful for other people. Uh, we do have a video on it, so uh, check out the video on uh, Google uh, GOO.GL, and we'll be uh, back in a sec. Hi, it's Adi from Adicore.com. Today I want to share with you something new from Google, which is called Google URL Shortener, uh, and this is the uh, the, uh, uh, the URL here. Um, as the name tells you, it is a URL shortener. Um, of course, there are two very basic reasons why people want to shorten the URL. Mm -hmm. Of course, the very first one is uh, if you are having a very very long URL, a lot of time it doesn't look very professional, and uh, it's always difficult for people to remember your URL. Um, the, for the second reason, of course, it's very obvious. If you are affiliate marketer, it is always good to hide your, your, uh, your, your affiliate link. Um, there are already some existing URL shortener in the market like tiny, tiny URL, but uh, Google just have gone extra mile. Um, why am I saying that? Just to show you a quick example. This is the one of the post in my blog, which is the 101 top tips, you know, work, work from home, make money online tips. Um, is you can see it's very long URL. So what I'll do is to click on the shorten, and here it goes. This is a shorten URL. You see, from this URL, it come to this. Um, of course, why am I saying that Google has gone extra mile? Because it give you a tracking data. Uh, you know, it show you when it was created, how many clicks been clicked on your shorten URL, and if you click on the detail. It give you a chart, it tell you the traffic source, it tell you where the visitors coming from. So it's really very resourceful and uh, it's good for you to do your data analysis, to do your own research, you know, monitor how how well your, your website perform, things like that. So give give it a go and uh, you know it's free, most important, it's free. Um okay that's it from me today. Thank you. Hey, and welcome back to Let's Talk Tech. Now, that video was explaining all about goo.gl, which is the Google 
uh, URL redirection. Um, so uh, I don't know if it included in that video about the uh, feature that it will provide with you, and that's the next topic we're going into. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a mix between uh, Google redirection and QR codes. Uh, QR codes are basically an image, um, and not like an image of a duck. It is a uh, either a two or three dimensional image, uh, which looks like a flat. It's a flat image. It could be put on flat paper, but is read by uh, your could be read by your iPhone or iPod, whatever you choose. Your Droid, uh, your any mobile device can uh, with an image picture thing uh, that's you know somewhat smart a smartphone. Um, can read this, and it uh, different QR codes are different, given different commands. Uh, the one that we are that I have uh, is one of them is a uh, QR code for the URL of our website, and you could scan that. Uh, uh, doesn't come out. It's not, it's not coming out completely on the screen. But if you can, if you have that completely on your screen, you could scan that. Uh, you could scan that code right now. And it would take you to our Let's Talk Tech Show page, which is currently under construction. Uh, the other one I have is also a text QR code. And again, if that is, uh, if you could view that entirely on your screen, uh, you can uh, scan that into your QR uh, scanner, and that will take you to a text, uh, which just thanks you. Um, thanks, Eric. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it up just because it didn't look like it came out clear on the screen. This is the URL code. You could scan that. And this is the text. You could scan this as well. Now if you scan uh, you scan those, uh, those will take you to uh, whatever it is, a text, a web URL. Now uh, this is uh, the what a QR code is. Uh, it is a barcode. Basically the same thing as a barcode. Uh, difference is that a barcode has a bunch of straight lines and uh, is meant for more uh, stock shelving, more for uh, numbers. Uh, where a QR code is meant for uh, SMS, which is texting. Uh, it's meant for web URLs, so uh, finding stuff fast. Uh, you'll find on a lot of products. On my washing machine, it has a QR code on there. And uh, that QR code will take me to the website and of the exact uh, actual item. So this way, if I need pa parts for it, it'll take me to that exact item, which actually is completely useful because I don't want to go, uh, when something breaks down, I have to go through, I have to find the part number for it and everything. Uh, so just to get the parts for it. If I can have a QR code uh, on a computer, on a uh, anything, uh, and just scan that image, I think this would be a great idea for Dell or Gateway. Uh, or any comp computer company that puts together uh, stock computers that, so the information is available online. You scan that QR code, it takes you right to the website where you need to go. Um, certain, uh, depends on what you're using. If you're using a Droid, uh, the Droid's a little bit, the Droid QR system, QR code scanner is a little bit different. Uh, when you go um, and you uh, scan a um, SMS code, which is a text messaging phone number, or just a phone number in general, uh, it will ask you what you want to do with it. So it doesn't matter what the command is for the QR code. If it's telling it to text or to, uh, it'll ask you, it registers as a number, uh, as a phone number, and it'll ask you what you want to do with it. Uh, my iPod, if I scan it in, it will go in and it'll do the actual command. It'll say, oh, well, this is a QR code for a text message. Obviously, it'll open up a text message with the number, and all I got to do is start texting. Um, but uh, yeah, no, if this is on a computer, if on, on anything, computers, washing machines, anything, um, it'd be great. It, find it right away, and then you could always uh, favorite it, um, or, or send it to yourself, or send it to someone else, and it'd be that simple. Um, it'd be super awesome and sp super spectacular. Uh, now, what I wanted to talk about this is uh, with the goo.gl uh, is that uh, goo.gl also embeds this image, embeds the uh, QR code images into every URL it uh, shortens. Uh, so you can easily go and um, s whatever one you could you could put the image on your page. People could scan it in, um, whatever you want to do. Uh, again, you can always just go and search for a QR code re uh, generator, and you can just put in the URL, the text, uh, the text number, or whatever the uh, 
just uh, the phone number, the text number, whatever you want to do, whatever command you want it to do, um, and it will do that for you. Uh, amazing stuff. I, I, um, I know it's very popular in cities. QR codes are amazingly popular in cities for, uh, and you know, it's just fun going around and, uh, you know, finding them, finding what to go to and snapping them. Uh, great, great stuff. I can definitely see a potential for this in the future, uh, a huge potential for this in the future. And uh, like I said, unlike barcodes, it's not just numbers, it's giving commands to go places, to do stuff. Uh, and if uh, QR codes in the future have even more stuff uh, to, uh, even more commands, uh, so it can go not just text messaging, phone numbers, uh, web URLs, but something else. Maybe even, um, I, I don't know, but something else. Um, eventually, you might start seeing these on TV, uh, maybe. I think they're gonna go into uh, interactive commercials, which is uh, basically you click OK on your remote for the commercial, and then it'll take you to the webpage. Um, but yeah, no, that uh, wraps up our QR section and our uh, Google topic for right now. And we're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be back in a sec. What if a disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. gets you moving because when you get moving an hour a day you fuel your body and your mind get up and play an hour a day doc check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov that's www.letsmove.gov cool could you zoom in yeah i know Okay, welcome back to Let's Talk Tech, and uh, we're gonna tr what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna try uh, talk about the MySpace here. Uh, MySpace is being sold. Goodbye, MySpace. Goodbye, Tom. Uh, one of our biggest friends in the world, uh, Tom. Uh, <laughs> Tom has been everyone's friend on MySpace for so many years, and now it's going down the drain. Uh, MySpace is being sold. Uh, is being sold for how much is it? 100 million. Uh, MySpace is being sold for 100 million dollars, which uh, at least they don't want anything under 100 million uh, for the company. Not just MySpace.com, just MySpace the company. Uh, that is being sold to another distributor, uh, so someone else could take care of it. And Tom doesn't want to do it anymore. Uh, if we could switch over to camera one. I think Tom's making out pretty good. Well, Tom made out pretty good, but uh, he now he's not, I guess, I don't know, not unless he still keeps his stocks in his company. Um, yeah, yeah. After, uh, this is the same thing I'm just, go, that's the same thing I'm just going off of right now. Yeah, if, yeah, it's not really, can I, yeah, I don't know if they can read that. No. Yeah, never mind, man. never mind. We'll just go with the, I'll just read off of it then. Uh, this is Riyadh, by the way. Uh, we've had him on the show. Forgot to introduce him. But yeah, he's going to be talking about MySpace uh, with us. Yeah, no, they, uh, they sold it for, um, they want to sell for at least $100 million. Who's going to buy it? I have no idea. Uh, they knocked down the price because it was bought five years ago. Uh, MySpace, when MySpace was bought five years ago, it was bought uh, for $500 million, I believe. Uh, $500 million it was bought for. And it's been dropped down considerably to $100 million. Uh, for someone to buy the company, uh, so it's open for uh, open for bids, but we don't know who's going to buy it. Um, obviously, uh, not any regular Joe can uh, go and uh, do this, but um, 
My question is, who uses MySpace anymore? Yeah, really? I know. That's the question. That's well. That's the thing. Facebook that's why they're. That's why they're giving it up because yeah. it's like, who really uses? Who really uses it? Nobody uses it. Facebook it's, really killed them, like especially with like they have all the productions pages and they if have all you the look, music pages. MySpace used to be pretty good with bands. Like you used to be able to find well, musicians can, and stuff still. If I can look it up, I would show you guys the. Uh, Yeah, um, my as MySpace and okay. Just zoom in on that chart. If you guys look at the chart, we're slowly zooming in on it. Now, if you guys look at the chart. It started uh, the the blue line. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference between the blue, but this blue line right here is MySpace. Uh, MySpace started uh, early 2005, where Facebook started uh, about 2000, about early 2006. Uh, and uh, so they definitely differed in each other. And you can see this line of MySpace, where it just basically stayed at its number of hits. Just basically stays and then it kind of goes down. Where Facebook, you can definitely see that it stayed for maybe two years, and then it just rocketed, skyrocketed up, uh, with uh, you know amazing uh, effort. With and MySpace is just left in dust. There's no uh, there, MySpace was basically a lost cause from the beginning, um, and and then when Facebook, it Facebook just dominated it. Um, but yeah, so again, it's not a huge topic. I mean, like, not, like, super long, but it's, like, a big deal because now we, now what's going to happen in MySpace is, uh, do you think, like, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, if these, this group that's going to buy MySpace, they could potentially do something, um, potentially do something with it. I don't know. Maybe they can make it into, like, it a would be nice. site or they can do some yeah. stuff with it. The, what has to be done now is MySpace has to be shut down. It needs to be shut down and then reconstructed completely. It, it, there's no Tom for a year has tried to edit it, tweak it, so it's uh, met somewhat better ex expectations to him. Mm. But he, it's either him himself. He just not a good design. He just doesn't have a good plan for everything, or it's um, the fact that it just my space just sucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think Tom was doing a pretty good job. He's only one man. Like he's doing his thing, but. Unfortunately, they when Facebook came around, they started getting some features and they yeah. started getting better. MySpace is kind of like old now. MySpace is more uh, uh, or le more uh, less actually third party, and that's where it's like apps and everything. Like it has apps, but it's not like M Facebook, uh, where it's more shareable. It also is um do with the people, the people on there. Really, there was any either there was no one on there. That you wanted, that you could easily find. A lot of it was so hard to find people. When you would search for a school, you search between these ages, and half the time you couldn't find the people you wanted to find anyway. And it was all like, oh, you can only add this person if you know their email. And it was just like, okay, that's a security feature, but I shouldn't have to know their email. They should make their own decision based on if they know me or not. Um, Wasn't there an issue for a while with ages on MySpace? Like even a huge issue with ages. Even uh, little kids could go on MySpace and like have a MySpace, yeah. and then huge their parents would try to get them off MySpace. Yeah, I know Facebook. I believe that they have a third. You have to be thirteen or twelve years old. Thir to, it's either thirteen, 13 or fourteen to start. There's probably ways to get around it, but like it seems like oh, yeah, Facebook is more professional, I guess, on that level. They they know what they're doing a little bit more with the restrictions. I know a little while back people were mad about all the different privacy settings Facebook was was changing. It was changing a lot of privacy settings, but I like the privacy settings now. They actually seem to have it in the right spot. If you mm -hmm. know how to change your privacy settings, you're in the right spot. You know they ha they have the right spot for privacy settings at the moment. Um, in the past, a lot of people were uh, mad about it because it was change. Uh, a lot of people don't like change. No one likes change, especially at a fast rate. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, people are just like, oh, no, I don't understand it because there's so many people that just don't know um, about technology and all of a sudden they have to catch up to this new technology. Um, but, you yeah, know, uh, security settings, 
please go in your security settings, look at anything you can look at, customize it uh, as much as you can. Um, you can do you can do almost anything with security settings now. You can block certain people from not reading uh, certain po certain posts that you make. Uh, let's say you make a post about someone you don't want them to read it. Um, you can block them from that seeing that post. Uh, useless because then someone else could see it and tell them anyway. But uh, yeah, it still what works. Uh, but yeah, it, it, the privacy settings are on the nose. I mean, what do you foresee them doing with MySpace? What's the future? What uh, the future of MySpace, uh, I couldn't even tell you because I don't know who's going to buy it. Um, if I like, if once I know who's going to buy it, then I can go through and I can predict and say, oh, well, um, Red Hat's buying it. Oh, well, this is this actually might be a good thing. Red Hat is Linux. Yeah. So it's like um, they'll develop something within the operating system. Yeah. It, it, well, it won't be quite that, but it would be more like. Now uh, Red Hat's open source, so it's like okay, well, this maybe MySpace and they're not going to be so bad. Um, the layout is just terrible on MySpace, um, and the people that are on there you don't want to talk to, and nobody's on there half the time anyway. So it's more like we might as well just go over to Facebook um, because it's more like you know there's more people over there. They're on there all the time. Uh, I probably spend a good three or four hours a day on MySpace, if or on Facebook rather. You know, I haven't been on my MySpace. What do you think forever. about it, though that MySpace has like the fully customizable pages? Uh, the full oh those yeah the profile pages like that was one. They're of the, only the, 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 the interesting thing about that is that the they're customizable by uh, HTML only. If you try and put in a PHP into there, it won't work. Mm -hmm. Put in a JavaScript, it may work. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, HTML only, which I don't like. Um, re many restrictions. Um, but yeah, customized pages are nice. Facebook has a thing. I've seen people that have had pink pages and stuff like that. I don't know how they do it. Um, they, they must enter in some sort of code or they must have some sort of external app that's put on there. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can do certain stuff with MySpace, or Fa MySpace and Facebook, but MySpace is more customizable. Um, I don't know. Uh, I feel like there's a section just for musical artists and stuff like that on MySpace as opposed to Facebook. But uh, again, I don't really search around on our I, section on Facebook. I'll tell you, from the Facebook that I have for Let's Talk Tech set up there, I'm not happy with what we have mm. um, for our selection. I mean, I, I, I have us in the TV set category. Um, but um, it's, yeah, I'm not pleased with the uh, selection that they have for information. What I do like is their um, mood. You can put your mood in when you put your status in. Mm -hmm. uh, that was interesting. They, they uh, kind of took that off on um, other Nickelodeon shows. They, t they spoofed that off on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically the only thing I really like about MySpace. Other than that, I don't like the information. Uh, you know, it's more like Twitter where you randomly add people. And, you know, you're never going to read those posts, you know. <laughs> what do you think about, uh, like, a dislike button on Facebook? Because I know a lot of people wanted that for a long time. A lot of people want it for a long time. There's many groups about it. I've joined many of those groups. Uh, but the problem is, is that um, if there is a dislike button, uh, it's going to kind of contradict with the like button. Mm -hmm. The like button was put out there because they wanted you to be able to like a page instead of disliking a page. Because all of a sudden, why would you want to promote a page you're going to dislike? I know a while back to the production pages and the different pages for groups, a while back it was uh, you could friend the group, but now it's you like the group or yeah. you, you hit a button to like it now instead yeah. of they change the wording for it. Yeah, they, well, yeah, they ha you have like, recommend, and join. Yeah, you like and recommend, I think. Like and recommend. You can recommend it and then you could like it. Basically, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um but the, uh, the thing is, is uh, back to your dislike, if they had a dislike button, it would basically be every time you press your like button, it goes up on your page. It says so-and-so likes this. You're yeah. promoting it now. If you have a dislike button, then you're like, oh, well, so-and-so dislikes this. You're still promoting it. You don't want to do something you don't like. Mm -hmm. you know? um, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and I don't know, um, I don't know about that. I, I don't know. I think there should be a button for dislike. It seems like it should be. What? Oh, they're, me yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, if there was a, I mean, it would be 
you have to code it. Th they'd have to code. I, I, I don't know the, if the, what would interfere with it. What they have with the like button, that would completely interfere with it. But there must be a reason they don't have it. They didn't put it on there. Because a lot of people wanted it. There's maybe a couple thousand people who wanted that button, you know. Um, wow. Okay. What else do you have to talk about today? Oh, about that and me. But I don't think I'm going to get a chance to talk about that much. Um, okay, I'll go over a quick thing about it. About.me. Uh, About.me is a website which is basically completely useless, which is why I saved this till the end. Um, About.me. About.me. Uh, you basically go, uh, it, you create a page, and all you do is you type on uh, a description of yourself. That's it. Um, that is it. There's no, what do you do for a job? Uh, what do you do uh, in your spare time? No. It is a basically a paragraph box and you type in what you want, what you do uh, about yourself, uh, any details or anything. Um, so it's a self-made biography by yourself. Yeah, it's not even a blog. It's autobiography. Yeah, it's not like a blog where like you can put in other information. It is just what you see on the screen. That's basically all of the website. So is. I can, so someone can potentially just go on there and write, oh, I'm the best person in the world and I have $20 million and they can put it on there and just leave it there? Is that what it is? They can do that. Other people can't. You're the only one who can write on it. Which is crap. Um, if you want to, you could, there's uh, on the screen, like on the website, there's a Facebook button, a Twitter button, a YouTube button, uh, and you can add other sites. So this way they can go to that site and get either more information on you. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to about.me backslash Alan Billings or just search Alan Billings on about.me, uh, you get my description, which is rather brief. I just made it in a little while. And then you have my website, which is alanbillings.com. And then you have uh, your Facebook buttons, which all links you to your Facebook. Uh, that is all the time we have for today. And uh, we'll be back hopefully next week with some Google, some Facebook, maybe talking a little more about MySpace. Uh, and uh, we'll see you then. You're always talking about the Google. Yep. <laughs> Thank you.